welcome! Are you looking for something different? Something unconventional and unpredictable? An actual play podcast that blends comedy, improvisation, horror and storytelling to create something greater. Perhaps you seek homebrew adventure or the entire retelling of a 5th edition D&D adventure in a way you've never heard before. Or maybe something from the Cthulhu mythos. Then check out Penance RPG. Visit penancerpg.com or join us on social media. We have such tales to show you. players where theatrical people play role-playing games. I'm Matt, I'm your compere for this season, and I'm joined by Natalie. Hello. I'm joined by Helen. Hello. Uh, Strat is also here. Hi. And finally, uh, the focus of today's backstage episode, uh, welcome Ellen. Hello. Ellen, you've been in two seasons of Millie Role Players before this. I have. Uh, do you want to tell us which ones they were? Yes, I was in Upstaged. Uh, Extra and points for correct pronunciation. Thank you very much. <laughs> practicing. Uh, and Viola. Yes. Most recently. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we've we've got we've got Prospero people and Viola people here. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> we're not in the same recording session, but we're in the same season. So, of those two, mm-hmm. let's take a look back at your experiences on the show. Um, are there moments from either or both of those seasons that uh, that you still think about that you that you still remember sometimes? Yes, mm-hmm. uh, I think. Mostly, I think about my decision to stay on the island mm. because that came literally from nowhere. I it was had a lovely moment. I didn't have it in my head. I was shocked. I, I was shocked. I was yeah. shocked. And I was like, well, we I'm going with this then. Um, when the when the crew had got the got the uh, warbler out and they came to get me off the bank, and I was like, actually, nah, I'm just here. Um, it felt to me like it. It was a really like it came out of like a really kind of logical progression yeah. because you you'd been sort of voicing worries in almost like the half hour up to that moment <laughs> I was like, so scared <laughs> I'm the only one who's never been never been to space I don't know what spaceships are what if it doesn't work for me so it felt really organic when you did it mm. even if it felt like it came out of the blue I think that happened really naturally because I don't know whether my mind was in a completely different world that day but it took me forever to cotton on to what was going on oh, right <laughs> So, I mean, I've listened to all of the seasons that I've been in and all the seasons I've not been in. I did not recognise recognize the boat. <laughs> I didn't recognise that the brown shape at the bottom of the lovely <laughs> lake was what it was. Um, and so I felt really confused and I didn't want to um, to question the other players as to what was going on because I felt like it would ruin something organic that might happen. Oh. So the whole time I was like, but what's about Strat? <laughs> we can't leave the island. <laughs> the only thing I know is that Strat didn't come home. Um, it was nice to have somebody in that crew like, continually <laughs> remembering like, to voice guys, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was nice that someone gave a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think because I'd, I had sort of um, adopted a uh, sort of lone wolfy attitude in that episode in that series that it just it suddenly made sense that no I, I think I would stay and I'm, I'm happy that I did it and mm. that's the thing that I remember a lot but with Upstaged all I really think about is, is strap diving off Brighton Pier <laughs> <laughs> but it it's take just, away. <laughs> but um Yep. I'm quite proud that I, I think I did I, I saved the day by diving across the grid with a DVD held between my teeth yeah. and I don't think anyone has ever saved the day with a DVD before <laughs> <laughs> like strange stakes there so yeah. I'm, I'm quite proud of that one I, I have a, a memorable moment but sort of like I only half remember it who was it that that the Baroness promised that she was going to teach them how to punch seagulls out of the air. Was that you or was that, was that Nat? I think it was, I think was, it was Nat. Nat. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> my I big need to great that. lesson that one. My <laughs> big memory from from you in that one. I'm just going through my sheets. <laughs> um, just because I want to get the name right. Ma- Mary. No, was it Mary your Ma- relationship Ma- with Kathy Smythe? Kathy. Yeah. Kathy. Oh, Kathy. Oh. Love of my life. <laughs> so that sweet. So sporty. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was lovely. I just remember us, me, Nat, me, you, and uh, Ellie, all like cheering. Yeah, Ellen, on. <laughs> Good just gonna, like, yeah, being those faces in the background, just like yeah, having the most awkward conversation. <laughs> John, get a coffee. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> like your freckles. <laughs> no. Um. So, with all of that in mind, mm-hmm. w- which would you say is the the most memorable season for you? Um, if you had to pick just one. Oh, I actually think it's going to be upstaged. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, possibly because it was my first one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with upstaged. Okay. All right. Give, uh, give yourself a plus one on the upstaged sheet, uh, and it will be easier for you to remember yourself into that persona. Okay. Cool. So then, next of those two stories, mm. um, is there one that you would want to revisit in another session, either because you feel like there's there's more to explore in the world, or because you feel like you in that story had some sort of unfinished business um i think definitely viola in mm-hmm. that especially because i i remained on the island yeah. and i was determined to find its secrets <laughs> i feel like i would have become some kind of wild woman mm-hmm. living off the land um i'd be interested to see what became of me in that mm-hmm. world and whether i got any better at making the things i tried to make <laughs> Whether I ever made a cup. <laughs> 25 years on the island, just thinking about cups. <laughs> <laughs> quest, a lifelong quest for the secret of cups. <laughs> and I think I would have, I think I would have liked to have explored the whole island mm-hmm. and, and found what else was hidden there. Whether it would have made any sense to me, mm-hmm. I don't know, mm-hmm. but potential there. Okay. Well, that gives you a plus one on that sheet as well. Excellent. Plus one to recall Plus both one's all so round. far. Okay. Uh, it could all change in the quick fire round. <laughs> um, so, Dude. of these two versions mm-hmm. of yourself, which one do you feel like is the closest to the real Ellen and which is the furthest away? I think upstaged Ellen is more me because my, my core um, motivation in that one was joy. And yeah. I think I am a, a much more um, sociable and positive person. <laughs> Until you were corrupted by Stratton over here. Making people jump off. Here's <laughs> corrupted them for victory. But yeah, I think I think that version is almost certainly more me than the sort of uh, lone wolfy, go off by myself person okay. version of myself that I was in real. Okay, well, that's going to adjust the upstaged Ellen up one, so turning that into a plus two. Real easy to remember. Okay. Uh, And it's going to adjust uh, Viola Ellen down one to a a zero. That'll be a a flat roll. Okay. So then just to close out, Mm -hmm. um, you've been in two seasons. We've done nine different genres. Um, Are there any of the other seasons that we've done that you wish you'd got to kind of play in that world? And are there any other genres that we haven't touched on Mm -hmm. that you would really like to to get involved in at some point uh yeah i think um i think i'd have loved to have been part of the wild west one i think because calamity jane has always been an idol mm-hmm. um and actually the heist mm-hmm. i love a heist and that was yeah get gideon was um fast-paced and exciting and very very silly and very silly <laughs> very silly but that's the best bit and in terms of like something that we've not done, I thought horror as well. Mm. But then I also thought like uh, post-apocalyptic, oh, yeah. whether it be like zombie mm. or and monsters or some kind of nuclear like fallout. Yeah, totally. Um, and a sort of a whodunit or noir, mm-hmm. like an oh, old yeah. school yeah. noir, mm-hmm. would be quite fun. Yeah, they're the main things that cross my mind. Great. Well, maybe there will be an opportunity either in this session mm. or in a future one. Uh, for something like those. Uh, In the meantime, Ellen, you're ready to play. I'm so ready. You've been listening to Merely Role Players. In this season, you'll hear Ellie Pitkin, Alex Pankhurst, Josh Yard and Dave... 
Chris Starkey, Chris Buxey and Chris, Helen Stratton, Ellen Gould, Natalie Winter and Strat, all playing various versions of themselves, along with special guest appearances by Ellie Pitkin as Nia and the Space Jam Continuum podcast's Chris McLennan as Candice. I'm Matt, and I edited and produced the season, wrote and performed the theme music, and designed and ran the game we're playing. Like most of our games, this one's powered by the apocalypse. You can find more games in this genre at apocalypse-world.com slash pbta. If you enjoy Merely Role Players, let us know with a review or rating on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or wherever you do your listening. You can also find us on Twitter at Merely Roleplay, at facebook.com slash Merely Roleplayers, and at Merely Roleplayers.com. Merely Role Players is an independent production in association with Blackshaw Theatre Company. Join us for more drama next episode. Thank you.